Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK here and in this quick tutorial we're going to be looking at how to build, rig and animate a small character using Cinema 4D's Character Builder and C-Motion. Now in other tutorials I have looked at the Character Builder in a lot more detail but in this instance we're just going to build a quick rig and then we're going to model an incredibly simple character in you know, sort of the 3D equivalent of a stick man and then we're going to use C-Motion to animate him. Okay, So I'm just going to go up to my character and then I'm going to create a character and then under character, it's a number of times you can say character in this tutorial, and then go to biped. I'm going to go very simple for this and then I click root to give me the root then I'm going to choose FK to give me the spine. With Control and Shift down, I'm going to choose Arm IK. And then I'm going to click Leg with Shift and Control also down. Boom. There we go to get both the legs and both the arms. And then just click Head. There we go. Um, and we're not going to have more than one head on this character. That would be a bit strange. So there we go. In about 30 seconds flat, we have a simple biped character rig. Marvellous. Now, in most instances, you would then adjust your rig to the model that you have made. But for this one, I'm going to cheat and I am going to model to the rig that I have. So I'm just going to create a cube and then I'm going to shrink it down because this is going to be a very simple character. OK, like I say, it's the 3D equivalent of a stick man. So I'm just going to shrink a bit, get it into relatively the right positions as to where the hips would be. OK, cool. And before I make it editable, I'm going to subdivide it along its X axis because I want to easily divide it down the middle. OK, two segments, then editable, then a subdivision surface and drag and drop the cube in and boom. There we go. We have that. Marvellous. So now I can start grabbing this stuff and extruding. OK, with M and T. And I'm just going to sort of extrude up to each of the joints. There we go. And I'm just going to go just below the shoulders. Might just move that down and then extrude above the shoulders. There we go. OK, then I'm going to select the two polygons either side that I'm going to use as the arms. Go M and W because that will allow me to extrude inner. OK, and then I can just scale those polygons. Use M and T and then I'm going to extrude out again. Go to the side view, may move that down, and then I'm going to extrude out again to give me the wrists and extrude out to give me the hands. There we go. Incredibly simple. Um, I might do some adjustments of that a little bit in a minute. And then underneath to get the legs, select both of the polygons that are going to be its legs. OK, and then M and W again. But this time I need to untick preserve groups. Because if I was to do it without, it would shrink it together. Whereas what I want is untick that. You can see it will do them separately. And then I'm just going to shrink them again so that they're not quite as wide. And then M and T to extrude. And I'm just going to extrude down to the knees. Then I'm going to extrude down to just above where the ankles are going to be and extrude down again to just where the floor is. There we go. Incredibly simple. And then grab the two fronts, M and T again. And there I go. I have his amazing flipper shoes. Can you see how incredibly simple this is? So get the two polygons on there, M and W. This time I need to preserve groups because I want to give him a neck. And I want to go all in one. There we go. I'm just going to turn off the SDS just to make sure it's not going a bit crazy. Um, M and T to extrude up, neck, M, W to extrude out, M, T, up. OK, so massive bobblehead man. Um, again, this is supposedly incredibly simple. You are, you know, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. But this is largely to sort of show you the rigging and just how mind numbingly simple it can be even with a god awful model like this. So U and L, I'm just going to shrink those a bit so that it's not quite so huge. And I'm going to use these polygons here 
get my selection tool, untick visible units so that I can select the points that are underneath and then just move those a little bit further back. So is a bit more a handy as it were. Okay, cool. It's a bit like some sort of odd robot. But there we go. In you know a couple of minutes we have created um, a, what is a very bad character model. Okay, you would never do with a character model like this, but I want to show you just how quickly we can get stuff going. So that's the character model done with these lovely little flipper shoes. Now we need to bind it to our character. And to do that, we get our character. And if you wanted to adjust and move stuff about, then you would use adjust and you could sort of move where the shoulders are, depending on what you want it to be. You can adjust where the neck is or where the ankles are and the end of the toes, which maybe we can do. So if we're happy with where some of them are, you know, we can adjust some of our controllers and the end of our feet. OK, oh, it's because I'm on that mode. Um, there we go. So that's where the toes will start. That's where the toes will finish. You know, you've got the ability of mapping exactly where you want stuff. And because of Cinema 4D's symmetry, it's really lovely to just, you know, throw stuff about. There you go. So that's the elbow, okay, and that's the hand. And we have adjusted our model. You know, it's that simple in Cinema 4D. So spine tip, top of the head, there we go. That's how quickly you adjust one of Cinema 4D's character models. Obviously, the more complicated the model, the more complicated the rig, the longer that would normally take. But it's really quite simple just to get going. And once that's done, we go to binding. Now, binding used to be an absolute pain, but now it's relatively simple. In fact, it's incredibly simple. You go to binding and you drag and drop the object that you want to bind it to. Boom, done. It is now bound. So we have a skin tag and we have our weights tag. And now we go on our character to animate and we just test our rig. So using the move tool and maybe selecting so the right leg, you can move that out and it's not too bad. Okay, it's having a bit of an effect on stuff that we don't want. Uh, let's try the root, bouncy, okay. Ooh, look at that, it goes completely crazy. So we're gonna have to adjust some weighting and then the right or left arms, you know, it goes a little bit doolally. So we need to adjust its weight and its weight is done through the weights manager. So if I go to character and manager and weights, there we go. I can select all of my character. In fact, I can select that tag and it means that I am now going to edit all of those. I'm gonna to go to auto weight, which will automatically weight it as you would assume. Distance doesn't too bad a job, but actually I found that visibility works quite well. And if I click calculate, it's now reweighted. So if I just close that, and now if I get the arm, Bingo, look at that. Okay, it may not be the best ever, but let's face it, my model's not the best ever. But in can, you know, for people who have done waiting before, this is, considering there's a touch of a button, incredibly simple, okay, and really gets this sort of stuff working quite nicely. And boom, there we go. So in a couple of minutes, we have managed to build a character rig, build a really, really simple model there and weight it to a point where it's not too bad and works quite well. Okay, so now we need to see whether or not we can add animation to it. So going to my character, this is the fun part, I'm going to click the add walk button. Boom, and then press play. Marvelous, my animation skills are ever increasing. But there we go, we have an animated character, albeit not the best, and I'm gonna show you how to adjust those sorts of things now. So if you click on the C motion, we've got access to its stride. So at the moment it's 27 centimeters, you can whack that up to 61 and it starts to get you know a little bit more realistic. You can go completely crazy and it will, I don't know what that's doing and I think I'm gonna turn that down. Um, but 
you can see what you think works best. So maybe that is not too bad. Maybe I'm just going to go for, say, 75. OK, and you can see we've got quite a nice little walk cycle going on. Now, with the C-Motion setup, we've got access to a whole load of things that we can control. So the leg lift, you know, whether or not you think that's going up or down enough, at the moment it's 2.729. And you can just, you know, put that up. So you can see that that left foot now picks itself out a lot more. So if I change that to 12, because it means that I can go to the left, uh, right foot and I can go to 12 as well. And they will now do the similar sort of stuff. Marvellous. It's that simple. OK, you can look at the route. OK, you can look at its target options so you can choose whether or not it's, you know, over to one side walking on a slant. Maybe just zero that out or whether or not it's higher than it was. So he's now going to walk on tiptoes or much lower. So he's going to try and plod his way and, and sneak. So I'm just going to turn that back to zero. There we go. But it's incredibly simple. If you want to look at the lift of how much it's bobbing up and down, you can change that. At the moment, it's 1.3. You can choose 1.4, 1.5. Again, you can go crazy. So, <laughs> wow, uh, he is an incredibly happy walker. Uh, you may want to turn that down a bit. Um, you know, five is still crazy. Three, I think I'm going to go back to the 1.5. There we go. It's, it's not too bad. It, it's so quick and easy to get this walking. Now, the left and right arms are obviously sitting there not doing a lot. Um, and at the moment, they're being driven by the hub. So this is, you know, the thing that we can control where they're going up and down with. He's already got steps. So look what happens if I change that from hub to step. OK, he starts to be able to move. And then we have access to these things. OK, this is where the horizontal and vertical thing starts to really work. So how far away from the main mesh it is how high it is. So if you want it to be a bit more useful, you know, you can really start to adjust this. And look at that. We've got, albeit the mesh is a little bit tatty, but that's because there's nowhere near enough subdivisions for this. I've got a little walk, okay? And you can choose this sort of position, how far and forward and back it is. So if I just standardize those to so say 15, 30 and 100, it means on this one, I can also go to 15. Oops. Oh. Yeah. Might need to be minus 15. And then a 30 and 100. OK, so, oh, I'm really not doing very well with my uh, numbers there, am I? So minus 30. OK and also change that to steps. And there we go. We've created our little power walker here, which is brilliant. Oh, that's a little bit crazy, isn't it? Goes all the way back. Maybe I do want to keep that at 15. There we go. And if I was to model a cross trainer underneath, there we go. We've got our perfect cross training model there working, working away. And there we go in such a incredibly short period of time, I've got, albeit quite a naff, animated character. And C-Motion allows you to sort of change that. So we've got it at the moment on static. I could do line and off it goes. Okay, incredible. This is, this is just brilliant. We've got a little character who can walk his way across the screen. Imagine what you can do with spending a lot more than what I'm assuming is about less than 10 minutes on a model and a rig and an animation. I hope this was a useful sort of uh, quick start, almost a kick start, as it were, into your walking animation and learning what the character builder can do in such a short period of time and that you will utilize it on a much better model than I have managed in my five minute tutorial. Okay, I hope this was useful and I shall catch you next time.